I want to welcome everybody again. I'm, I'm Jamal Corner. I'm going to be facilitating uh, this morning's information session. If you do require uh, Spanish translations for this session, please follow the directions on the screen. I'd also like to remind our speakers to speak a little slowly this morning uh, as it's being translated simultaneously. Joining us this morning, we have Vice President Ms. Renteria and member Mr. Morales from our Board of Education. We have Superintendent Dr. Gudio Crossway, Assistant Superintendent of Education Services, Dr. Shauna Dinkins, Chief Business Officer Gregory Fromm, and Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Dr. Brian Lucas. At this time, I'm gonna invite Board Vice President Renteria and Board Member Morales to say a few words. Ms. Renteria. Good morning and thank you so much. Uh, to all of you for joining us today. Um, it's really important for us to just make sure that we share information as it becomes available and that we take proactive steps to hear from you. So just know from the bottom of our hearts, we know how difficult this hall has been. And yet we're just super grateful that you're all here this morning and that you're a part of this conversation. Um, just know that as a board, we feel strongly that what occurred is unacceptable in our community. And we are going to be aggressive in ensuring that we hold anyone responsible for the construction issues accountable. Uh, know that as a board, we're extremely empathetic to how our community and staff is being impacted by this transition. But rest assured that we are making safety the top priority. We remain committed to providing safe and engaging learning and work environments for all of our students, our staff, our faculty, and our families in the community. This is a very complex issue that will impact all of our lives. And it's so important that we just begin this conversation today and those impacts. This morning, you will be hearing from experts in our district that are going to be talking about the steps that we are taking to remedy the high school construction issues and how we plan to accommodate our students for the 2020-21, uh, for the 2022 school year. I just wanted to be here and let you know that as a board, we are all committed to resolving these issues uh, at Linwood High School quickly and responsibly while holding those accountable responsible as well. And I wanna thank you in advance just for your steadfast support as we navigate these issues together. I know that we are working to ensure that we provide regular updates because we want you to know that you're in this with us, we're in this together. So just please continue to stay updated, continue to come to these uh, town halls. I know that we have many more planned ahead. And as we continue to receive information, we will continue sharing it as well. I know Mr. Morales is with us, so I don't know if you'd like to add some words at this point, Mr. Morales. Uh, thank you, Ms. Renteria. Uh, I would, I just wanna add to everyone that, you know, Mrs. Renteria and I are here because we wanna hear as a board what you have to say. Um, we're gonna be, as far as the board is concerned, at, a mo at all the meetings, hopefully. Uh, we can only have two members at most at every one of these. Uh, we can't have three uh, because of legal issues. So there will be at least one of us at every board meet at every um, town hall meeting and we'll be listening to hear your concerns and know that we've tried to make information available to you as soon as we felt that we could share the information and have a plan for you. The last thing we wanted to do was to cause any kind of panic and not have a plan because we know it's important for you to have security and to know that you have the certainty that your child's education will be provided for and that they would be safe and that our staff will be safe. And the, those were the driving issues behind all the decisions we made. And you'll see uh, an outline of the timeline of what has occurred. And you'll see that we've been hard at work ever since this occurred and that there's things that need to be done in a timely manner because of certain rules and regulations. But we are working hard on this and there was very little time to have input from community as far as what we're gonna do now for the opening of the school year that's coming up. But you will be involved and we will be listening to the community uh, for the long-term remedies. So thank you very much for joining us today and please be involved. Thank you, Ms. Renteria and Ms. Morales. We certainly appreciate you being here. At this time, I'm gonna introduce our superintendent, Dr. Crossway. He's gonna provide an overview of today's session. Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Mr. Corner. 
And uh, thank you, Vice President Ms. Renteria and Board Member Mr. Morales for joining us today. Thank you for your support and your unwavering leadership for the Linwood community. So I wanna start off by also thanking every one of you for attending today's information session. And first and foremost, I hope that you, your family, and your loved ones are all doing well. I know that there's a lot of questions about, about what's going on and, and we will do our best to answer as many as we can today. But we will also have multiple opportunities for you to share your concerns and direct any questions that you may have to us. Today, as Ms. Renteria has shared, we will provide you with a summary of the issues we are facing, as well as our current instructional plans for next year. And at the end of the meeting, we will have a question and answer session. So again, please, as you have questions, enter them into the chat. Don't wait to the end, start entering them right now. While we know that the situation is not ideal, we are making these plans with student safety as our focus and plan to make the shift as seamless as possible. As a school district, we cannot compromise on student safety. So now I'll start by providing some background on the timeline of events that has led to these realignment plans. Plans for the instructional shifts were sparked by the discovery of structural issues at Linwood High School following the unexpected failure of the exterior roofing panels, also known as soffits at Linwood High School. Linwood Unified launched an immediate review to determine the extent of the issues on campus and the repairs needed. Linwood Unified families were also provided high level information that there had been a structural issue that we were looking into. Our school board immediately scheduled an emergency board meeting to address the situation in June. Linwood Unified quickly launched a review to determine the extent of the issues on campus and the repairs needed. And as you can see on the following timeline, numerous meetings took place and ultimately Linwood Unified High Linwood Unified hired an independent structural engineer to help us assess the safety of the building while also investigating the cause of the collapse. Additionally, we have worked closely with the California Division of State Architects, also known as DSA, to address these concerns. Once again, once the soffits were identified as concerning, our school board quickly acted to hire a firm and in an overabundance of caution to remove those ceiling soffits. So here's some additional info about that timeline. On July 23rd, our school board made an agreement with Petra Structural Engineers to assess the condition of the plaster soffits at Linwood High School and entered into an agreement with Delterra to provide emergency project oversight regarding the removal of the soffits. On September 10th, our school board approved an emergency resolution to remove all soffits at Linwood High School. And then in October, our board approved agreements with contractors for the emergency removal of the soffits, followed by a meeting on November 8th, where we had another special meeting and study session. And then a few days later on November 12th, our school board approved an agreement with the engineering firm to assess the condition of various overhead items on the Linwood High School campus. For a little more background information regarding the October 8th board meeting, our school board entered into service agreement specifically with AP Construction and Fast Track Construction. And then on November 12th, our district made a structural engineering service agreement, again with Petra Structural Engineers, to further assess the condition of various overhead items at Linwood High School. And then in December, on December 10th, we entered into the agreement with TYR Incorporated to provide assessment services in conjunction with the emergency plastic soffit removal at Linwood High School. And then, just most recently, last month in January, on January 24th, on a Sunday, 
our school board came together, held another special meeting to review and receive an update on the Linwood High School facilities and propose instructional shifts for the 21-22 school year. At this meeting, our school board emphasized that our process must be very public and must be very transparent with all decisions putting student and, st uh, student and staff safety first. The following day on Monday, January 25th, we informed our school principals of these shifts and met with the staff at Linwood High School and at Linwood Middle School. And on the following day, on Tuesday, January 26, we notified families that the structural concerns were serious and that plans were in development to physically move instruction off of Linwood High School's campus while the investigation continued and repairs are made. Our district is planning to move all Linwood High School student instruction to another campus for the 21-22 school year, which of course is impacting middle school as well as elementary students. Please note, we have the following, uh, the dates for the future information sessions and the respective topics. Each information session will be recorded and made available on our district website in English and in Spanish, so people can go to them at any time in the future and see any of them or all of them. And throughout this transition, we will provide regular updates to our community, sharing new information as it becomes available. And we're gonna do this through our website, phone blasts, the info sessions, social media, and direct mail outs to the homes. As a district, we will also be gathering feedback because we wanna hear from all of you. We recognize that not everyone can attend these info sessions. So we're planning on launching a digital survey that will be sent to Linwood Unified School District families this month. As always, I'd like to thank you for your support of the Linwood Unified School District as we continue to work together to create the strongest learning environments and strive to ensure the success for all of our students. And again, if you logged in a little late after we started, just reminder that at the end of this session, we will respond to questions you post to the Zoom chat. So we encourage you to submit those throughout the presentation. Do not wait. Thank you very much, Mr. Corner. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. And I do see a couple questions in the chat already. So nice job on that. Um, at this time, I'm gonna introduce Gregory Fromm. He's gonna provide us some details on the construction issues. Mr. Fromm. Thank you, Jamal. We will now take a look at the affected buildings. The G building, the central most multi-story facility where the classrooms are located has been closed for use since June of 2020. Out of an abundance of caution, the district hired the engineering firm assessing all buildings on campus. To a lesser extent, there are structural concerns at other LHS buildings. Once the, vet, once the investigation is complete and repairs are identified, a timeline will be set and shared with the community. At this time, we believe that repairs to lesser effective facilities could be completed before the 21-22 school year begins. At this time, we do not have information on the cost of the repairs or remedies to LHS campus, but the district will share these details once they are known. The district will aggressively pursue remuneration from anyone deemed responsible for these construction flaws, as well as matching funds from available state facility dollars. As you know, the Linwood community has supported bond measures for facility improvements in recent years. In 2012, the community supported Measure K, a $93 million bond measure which has so far funded over $52.7 million in repair projects and upgrades. The community also supported the $65 million Measure N in November of 2016. This bond measure has funded over $15.3 million in projects to date. In January, 2020, the district issued 25 million in bonds for repair and upgrade projects across the Linwood Unified Community. 
It's important to note that the community's approval of Measure K and Measure N included, included guidance on how these bond funds were to be used with a focus on specific facilities and repairs needed across the district. Funds from past bonds have been spent or are currently committed to current projects. Here is a list of recently completed and some pending projects at sites throughout the school district. Now back to you, Jamal. All right, thank you, Mr. Fromm. I'm just gonna remind our speakers uh, once again to try to speak slowly as we have our simultaneous translation. Also one more reminder for our audience that the chat is open for all of your questions. And we'll be answering those at the end in our Q&A session. Now at this time, I'm gonna introduce Dr. Shauna Dinkins. She's gonna highlight the district's plans for realignment. Dr. Dinkins. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Now that we've provided background on the construction issues, we will outline the instructional shifts for next year. Linwood High School students will attend the Linwood Middle School campus, which formerly housed Linwood High School. Current fifth graders will remain at their elementary schools next year for sixth grade. Cesar Chavez and Hostler Middle Schools will have grades seven and eight with most Linwood Middle School students attending Hostler. These adjustments are planned for the 21-22 school year, but may be extended as needed based on the extent of the construction issues at Linwood High School. Here we have a map that outlines school boundaries detailing where elementary students will promote for middle school. The shift of sixth graders to elementary school and the addition of new classrooms will ensure both schools provide strong learning environments for all students. Linwood Unified is committed to keeping our rigorous program of core academics and electives. During this transition time, such as AVID, STEAM, music, and college and career pathways. The district is currently in the process of determining the best assignments to serve students at our middle schools. In many cases, we expect our current Linwood Middle School students, seventh and eighth grade teachers to shift to Hostler while sixth grade teachers will shift to elementary schools. Principals will be dedicated to ensuring strong student connections and support. The district has also adopted a social emotional curriculum district-wide to support the needs of our students. We are working to provide additional social emotional support during this time of transition, including five licensed social workers. Our LMS counselors will also continue to be available to support Linwood Middle School students as they shift to their new campus. Now I'll turn it back over to Jamal. Thank you for that, Dr. Dinkins. Also just wanna thank our audience for attending our presentation this morning. And just, you know, please know that while many of the details of these plans are pending, uh, we, we remain focused on our goal, which is to do what's best for all of our students. We're gonna to continue to provide regular and transparent updates to our community as new information becomes available. Uh, we'll do that through our school and district websites and through messages emailed to our families. At this time, we're gonna share the questions that you've submitted in the chat. I will answer all those to the best of our ability. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that if you have a complex or personal question, you can always email those to meetingquestions at mylusd.org and we'll give you a private or direct response. For those of you, of course, who might be watching this at a later date, uh, we encourage you to also email your questions in so we can respond to those. And if we happen to miss your question uh, for whatever reason uh, during this session, you can follow up with an email to get those responses. So let's go ahead and go over to the chat for our first question. And I'll try to speak as slowly as I can for our, our translator to catch up. Uh, the first is, my son is in fifth grade. Do I have to do inscription on Cesar Chavez or on Lincoln still? I'm going to 
have Dr. Dinkins field that, if you wouldn't mind. Hi, if your son is fifth grade currently attending Lincoln, he will stay at Lincoln and you will not have to enroll him. Um, he will stay at his current school. Okay, thank you for that, Dr. Dinkins. Now let's move over here. I think there might be a couple questions for translation. So I'll, I'll give a moment here for those as well. Uh, also just wanna remind everybody that uh, the chat is open. I know we had you listen to the presentation and now we're kind of putting you on the spot, but uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and, and submit those. Mr. Corner, if I may. Sure. I also just want to acknowledge that we have our middle school principals on the Zoom as well. So I wanna thank and acknowledge them. Dr. Gardner from Chavez Middle School. I'm not sure if we can do a spotlight or I may have the camera off, but we also have Mr. John Terry uh, from Linwood Middle School and Ms. Celine Pinello from Hoster Middle School. And we may also have our principal from our virtual academy, Dr. Quintana on as well. So again, please continue submitting your questions and I, I know that this is a lot of information, but you know we're here to answer as many of the questions as possible. And just a reminder, you may walk away after this meeting with more questions, which is understood. Please make sure that you copy down the meeting questions at mylusd.org so you can send them to us at a later time. You could always come back and watch this video, as well as the other videos that will be available through our district website. And please encourage others to come to these sessions and attend these sessions because there's a lot of misinformation out there. And it's important that you get the accurate uh, information from the source. So, so come to these sessions, attend the information sessions. And then just a reminder, we're, we'll have the survey going out soon. And we know that a lot of people cannot attend these info sessions. We're holding them on 9 a.m. and at 6 p.m., even on a Friday, to make it as accessible to the community. But even then, we know that not everyone will be able to attend. And that's why we're doing that survey. And that survey is just another way to try to capture more of our input and feedback and questions, concerns from the community. And you may have some really good suggestions that maybe we haven't thought about. And so again, that's why it's really important for us to hear from you. And as you heard from our board members, Mr. Renteria and Mr. Morales, we wanna be make sure that we're transparent, that we're accessible. And that again, that you stay informed about what's going on. So I'll, I'll take it back to Mr. Corner because I see more questions now coming through. Thank you. Yes, we do have a few. Um, we have a suggestion here. Uh, there might be an option to remove the clinic and Masada home so there is enough space for LMS and students coming from LHS. Uh, so maybe Mr. Fromm, you could speak to uh, the space and what we're doing to accommodate students um, at LMS. Yes, we're, we're looking to reclaim as much space as we can at that, that site that's currently not being used by that school site. Uh, we're also bringing in portable classrooms as well. Uh, so the current size of LHS will be able to fit completely on the LMS campus for the next school year. All right, thank you, Mr. Fromm. And another question here. I would like to know if the staff and the STEM class will be relocating to Hostler. Dr. Lucas, would you like to field this question? Yes, uh, thank you so much for the question. We're very proud of the STEM program that has taken hold at uh, Linwood Middle School. And the plan is to move those programs to Hoss Hostler and uh, Cesar Chavez as well. So that program will be continuing there as well. And teachers from Linwood Middle School will be assigned uh, to those programs most likely as well as the existing staff at these other schools. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lucas. Our next question, teachers from the middle school, will they be with the sixth graders? Uh, Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this question? 
Yes, that is the plan um, for the current sixth grade teachers that are at CCMS to go back to the elementary schools. Thank you very much. And let's see. I do want to give a little more time for you guys to send any uh, further questions into the chat. And I'm, I'm going to remind you also of the email option, uh, meeting questions at mylusd.org. If a question occurs to you later, we're more than happy uh, to respond to it at a later time. Uh, I see a question here. Why don't they open middle school closer to this side? Um, Dr. Crossway, would you like to deal with this question? Sure. And, and just before I answer that question, I also just want to take a moment to uh, acknowledge that we have our director of secondary, Ms. Christ, um, Christine Arostegui um, Manson, as well as our director of elementary, Mr. Uh, Gallarzo. And so all of us are here for questions, whether you want to send them directly to my office, for example, Dr. Dinkins cabinet, but also your principals, directors, we're all here to support. And so the um, was it which I'm sorry, Mr. Corder, the question was regarding the um, the location. possibility. Of, yeah, the, exactly. The location. Yeah. Closer to this side. So we, we also have been getting more questions related to transportation. And we know that, you know, we, we showed up that map in terms of the proximity of the elementary schools, the middle schools, and now with the high schools it's gonna create a little bit more challenges for many of our families. And so know that we are in communication with Linwood City to address to communicate the communicate the transportation, but this is something that we're also going to be looking into. We will be assessing, and again, that survey is so important to give us a better indication of what your needs are, because again, as best as we can, we wanna make this as seamless as possible for you. Now, the other thing is that we know that there's gonna be increased traffic on Bullis. So that's why we have to work in collaboration with Linwood City, with the residents. We wanna be a good neighbor. And one of the things that you'll also see is an increased presence of our safety personnel around Linwood Middle School, Rosa Parks Elementary. And when I say that we're going to have an increased presence of our safety staff, it's not just on the, on the school grounds. If you remember pre-pandemic, our safety staff is there to make sure that your students, your children get to school safely and also get home safely. So we had them on Bullis, we had them on Imperial, we had them on Taco Bell and Atlantic and uh, Imperial because we wanna make sure that they're safe, that they feel safe. And that's one of the changes that you'll also be seeing. And I know that I received questions on the previous info sessions about, are we going to reduce staff? No, there are no plans to reduce staff because some of our schools will now be accommodating more students. You're gonna have more staff, more people to support. We're not changing the number of students uh, or the student ratio with, with teachers. And then the other thing I wanna make sure that you're aware of is that for the fall, it's unlikely that we're gonna go back to in-person with pre-pandemic numbers. It most likely will be a continuation of some type of virtual environment. It will be a, a hybrid approach where we have a limited number of students coming together with a teacher. And right now the safety protocols uh, call for 12 students to a teacher in a classroom with those safety protocols. And as a district, we require everyone to wear a face mask when they're on, on campus on, around each other. So those are just some of the information. And then one more thing I'll say, because we get this question a lot, is regarding the vaccine. Will we require students to get a vaccine? Will we require employees to get a vaccine? As a district, we don't have that authorization. We cannot require students nor employees to receive a vaccine. However, we are strongly recommending it and only the state legislation can make that a requirement, not school districts. And also keep in mind that there are no vaccines currently available for anyone under 16. 
that is still in process and it could take anywhere between six to nine months or longer before a vaccine is available for anyone under 16. So right now for the fall, we're still looking at very likely some type of a continuation of virtual environment or a hybrid approach where we have maybe half the number of students coming in at a time. And, and the question came up, 12 students per class, how are you going to select them? You will tell us in terms of, because not all families will be ready to send their kids back to school in person. And we know that. And so that's an option or a, a decision that you'll have to, to make at home and we'll respect your decision. And for students who are not ready to come back in person, remember that we now have a virtual academy and that will continue for the next school year as well. And the virtual academy uh, provides students the option to continue with the distance learning, even if we were to be able to return in person. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question, are you going to have two music teachers? Uh, Dr. Lucas, if you could maybe speak to our staffing efforts as well as um, efforts to retain programs. I'm sure as Dr. Crossway just mentioned, um, even though students are being distributed to other schools, the programs will be increased and staff will be increased at the other schools. So there is no plan to reduce music teachers or to reduce the program. Thank you for that. We have questions about uh, the option of, of just staying online rather than in person. Um, Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field that question? I'm sorry, Jamal, can you repeat the question? Is it, our, why don't we stay online versus come back in, in person? Correct, exactly. Um, you know, as, as, as we discussed uh, previously in the town hall, we want an opportunity for all students um, to have equitable access to all programs. Um, that online option is available to any family who chooses that option. Um, but in our framework of equity and access for all students, um, we will also have the hybrid model as well. Um, students have missed out on a lot of things as a result of the school closure. And we want to make sure that we open up that access for all families who choose. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. We have a question about the timeline of the instruction project. How long will it take? Uh, Mr. Fromm, would you like to field this? Yes, Jamal, at this time, we don't, we don't know. Uh, once we're done with our, all of our inspections uh, and we know the results, then, then we will be able to, form, to formulate a timeline. But at this, at this time, we do not know. Okay. Uh, next year, my daughter will attend high school. My question is due to our address, she will be going to Fireball. But since LHS is closer, can she stay and attend LHS? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this question? Uh, great question, yes. Um, one of the things that we are being sure to highlight is that we will accommodate those requests um, for transfers to alternate schools as space allows. We have our Director of Student Services Dr. Martinez, who's also present here today. And um, should you wish to go to another school, we'll process that permit for you um, as soon as possible. Okay, thank you for that. And I don't think I see any new questions here. Uh, I'll, I'll wait a beat just to give you an opportunity and also remind you about our email option. If you wanna send questions later and you think of, um, later questions. Uh, we'll also be having um, further informational meetings uh, next week uh, to further address uh, middle school and elementary families. So we'll, we've released that schedule of dates. I'll re-release that um, as well as the, uh, the Zoom links. Um, we'll also have a repeat of, of this meeting tonight uh, at 6 p.m. If you came in late or you just wanna revisit, um, you are certainly welcome to. So I think at this time, I'll go ahead and throw it back to Dr. Crossway. I think it's going to close us out. Thank you, Mr. Corner. <laughs> and before my closing comments, I'd like to ask our Vice President, Ms. Anteria, if she has any uh, closing comments, as well as Mr. Morales. Yes, thank you. 
So I just want to thank everyone for your questions. I was actually taking some notes myself. Um, these are the kinds of questions that we want to hear from you. And please, I ask that you use this email um, on the screen because we want to continue receiving your input. I know that as much as we all try to work together to be as creative as possible while continuing to put students first, because that has to always be the way we think about everything that we're doing. How can we ensure our students' safety and ensure the most optimal learning environment for them? Um, but as you think about that, we want your ideas. So please continue using this email. Um, I know all of us are also on social media. So if you ever want to reach out to us via those that avenue, that also works. But the, the goal and the purpose of all these different sessions will continue to be to receive your input. If maybe at this point you don't have any questions and you do have some at a later time, please send them in. Um, I hope that you continue collaborating with us and we get through this together. So thank you so much for just your support up to this point and for all that you do to ensure that our students are able to still learn from home as well. Thank you. I just wanna add that uh, I wanna echo what Mrs. Renteria said. You know, it's a, it's quite a challenging situation that we're in as a school district. And, you know, in the middle of pandemic to now have to deal with this as a school district, we know it's, it's you know, it could be stressful. You know, the good thing is it really hasn't affected, you know, uh, us now because, you know, we're doing the virtual learning. And, you know, thank God that no students were on the campus when there was the issue at Linwood High School. And we are cognizant of that. And this is why we're not gonna open that site until we know that it is safe. And for now, we know that it will not be uh, available for the beginning of the fall semester. Uh, and as things progress, you know, we will be informing you and we do wanna hear from you and wanna echo what Mrs. Fenteria said, because it is important for us to have that dialogue with you. We wanna hear uh, what you have to say and see what, if, if there's anything that we can do to make things better for our community. Thank you. Dr. Crossway, I want to jump in real quick. I do see one other question. I just thought I would address it while we're here. Um, and if any come in after we close the meeting, we can answer them um, in our next meeting as well. Uh, and that question is, uh, when L LMS students are sent to Hostler, will they divide them or will they all be a part of Hostler? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this question? Sure, yes. Uh, principals, along with district office staff and teachers, are all working on ways to bring the kids together. We will not divide them in the school. We want it to be one united family and through our social emotional curriculum, as well as other things that are being planned, um, we will um, have all students as hostler students. Okay, thank you for that. And now I'll let Dr. Crossway go ahead and close up. Thank you, Mr. Corner, and again, thank you, Mr. Morales and Ms. Venteria for your support, your presence, and um, I want to thank again all of you for attending this information session this morning. Thank you for making the time. We know that you're all very busy. We appreciate, again, your support uh, to the Linwood Unified community. I also just want to take a quick moment to acknowledge our translator interpreter, Ms. Elizabeth Orozco, great job. She has been talking the entire time. And again, we're here for you. We are the Linwood family. We are committed to continuing to support our mission of providing your child with the very best educational experience. That will not change. We are physically making some uh, adjustments in the physical location, but in terms of the programs, our emphasis on supporting students, getting more kids to graduate, getting more kids to college. We're here, we're the same, we're gonna continue doing that. And again, please make sure to encourage your neighbors, your families to attend these info sessions, get the accurate information. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Talk to us, give us a call. You know that we're accessible and available to address any questions as well as to attend any meetings that you may have. And so I wanna thank all of our principals and our directors for joining us today, our school board. And I wanna wish you all a very great Friday and, and a safe weekend. Continue 
keeping your distancing, protect yourself, protect others, wear your face mask. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. And that will conclude our meeting. Thank you again for joining us.